Inhibitor number two, under a lot of pressure. Down below half HP now with Tactical getting jumped on. This could be exactly what EG need. Equalizer's coming out, but Tactical's going down. That's the pick on the enemy AD carry, and Team Liquid's having a fight now without him available. Core JJ's staying alive. They're still looking to find a little bit of extra damage here, but nobody on Evil Geniuses is dead just yet. Jake is going to be taken low. Jake is going to be taken down. Core JJ, the next one to fall with just looking for the kills here. In between the next is Turin. Very far behind enemy line. Oh, he gets yeeted straight into the fountain. Ignore just catapulting him all the way across. And Evil Geniuses, five for nothing. What's up, everyone? I'm Captain Flowers, and I want to be the first to welcome you back to the Outplay by Play. You might have noticed things look a little different, but that's just because y'all enjoyed the MSI version of the show so much that we brought it back for more. Today, we take a deep dive into the butt-clenching final moments of Team Liquid's collapse in the narrowest of margins against evil geniuses and figure out just how we got there in the first place. To kick things off, both teams played a more reserved game, but it was a close back and forth between the junglers who were looking to prioritize their solo lanes for early leads. The result? Sven scaring getting a little too antsy with his ganks, and Santorin punishing at every turn. 17 minutes in, there's only three kills to show for, and a single tower taken on each side. But because Sven scaring got so far behind, it's Team Liquid who are sitting pretty in the driver's seat on Soul Point and a 3,000 gold lead. Come the mid-game, EG begin to turn the tide. With their backs against the wall, they find a favorable team fight outside the Dragon Pit and pull off the ace to deny Liquid the Cloud Soul. What's crazy about this is EG are in no position to win this fight, and if Liquid secures the soul, the game is pretty much a done deal. Take a look at the health bars of the remaining players on each team once the fight becomes a 3v3. After Jenkins connects the barrels onto Akali and Xin Zhao, most teams would have called the fight off. But thanks to some masterclass play and balls of steel from Jazuke, they're able to find the kills and hang on for dear life. As the game goes on, both teams continue to trade kills and objectives, with EG slowly but surely clawing their way back into the game. Jazuke was a man on a mission, looking to flip things upside down. And Impact? Well, he made some god-tier flanks to find Jenkins and deny Liquid the Cloud Soul once again, this time bringing EG up to Soul Point as well. And so, at 40 minutes, both teams have reached a pivotal point in the game, where it's on a knife's edge and they go back and forth between objectives, waiting to see who bites first. After EG secure the Cloud Soul, they notice Liquid have opted to trade objectives and go for Baron, to which EG calls for Engage and find yet another team fight ending in their favor. With four members of Team Liquid dead, EG plow down mid lane to end, securing both Tier 2 and 3 turrets, as well as the inhibitor before setting their eyes on the Nexus. But it's TL who put up a stellar base defense. Take a look at Jensen, who has Guardian Angel and Core JJ, who respawns just in time, stalling for as long as they can with the help of the Baron buff before their teammates respawn. Despite losing both Nexus turrets, it was just enough to stay in the game as EG opt to back out of the seas with the TL Cavalry respawning. Now this, this is where things really start to get interesting. At 44 minutes into the game, we're back to a deadlock where one mistake can dictate the outcome of everything up to this point. As both teams look to set up vision around the next crucial objective, the Elder Drake, it's another back and forth dance to see who bites first. It's important to note here that in a 5v5 team fight, EG has the edge with Danny, Impact, and Svinscaren all having a second life with Guardian Angel for the next brawl. But look at Core JJ, who spots Jazuke thanks to a ward and flashes over the wall with Zenith Blade, connecting the spell while predicting Jazuke's movement to catch him out. Jazuke immediately pops his Zonias, but it isn't enough, as he gets immediately eviscerated after coming out of the stasis. From this, it's EG who see an opportunity to pounce with Impact and Ignar leading the way. After Danny finishes off Core JJ, Impact finds the engage with Q2. It's Ignar who follows up with a flash pulverized combo to send four members of TL to the moon. But with their near full build Akali dead, Danny's damage alone is simply not enough as the two teams trade kills to make it a 3v3 after a flurry of GAs get proc. 
Jenkins actually nearly dies after getting hit by the True Shot Barrage when Danny respawns, but eats an orange to heal himself and flashes away to safety. And so with an open Nexus, EG have yet another chance to win. This time, with no Nexus turrets and an advantage in health, TL has to put up a base defense for the ages. As evil geniuses make their way toward the Nexus, it's Santorin who immediately throws down the Equalizer to zone both Impact and Svenskeren away. Meanwhile, take a look at Jensen, who throws down a combo of Harrowed Path and Spectral Maw before flashing onto Danny to catch him out. Svenskeren sees this and immediately charges through the flames of the Equalizer to save his carry. But he's met by Viego and the absurd damage of Rumble's Flame Spitter that brings him to just a sliver of health. Jenkins and Impact then join the party to clean up the kills, before Impact sets his sights onto Jensen, whose Viego passive ultimately saves him. We then get some 1v1 matchups as Jensen ults to kill off Danny, while Jenkins and Impact trade deaths of their own, leaving just Jensen alive. With that base defense, TL went on to secure both the Elder Dragon and the Baron with ease, before safely resetting and marching up mid for a siege of their own. But with the Elder buff lasting only two minutes, they were up against the clock. At 49 minutes, after dancing around EG's base, Team Liquid make a final effort to push for the Nexus before that Elder buff runs out, blowing Solar Flare, Equalizer, and Cannon Barrage, but yet failing to catch a single player or destroy the Nexus turrets. At this point, Team Liquid no longer have the Elder buff and are forced to wait for the next minion wave to push. As both teams continue to play a game of chicken back and forth, Watch Impact, who smells blood and sees that Tactical is miles away from his team and out of position. EG sense their window of opportunity and pounce immediately on the TL carry, who is forced to burn both summoner spells and his ult for the great escape. Unfortunately for him, he's up against three EG players who all burn a flash of their own and guarantee his eventual death. Now take a look at the positioning of the rest of the players. Ignar and Svenskeren have done their job, running interception and preventing the rest of TL from getting back to tactical. Impact, Jizuke, and Danny are now in a perfect position for a flank behind the wall, and Team Liquid are cornered from all sides. Ignar and Impact lead the way once again, this time with both carries alive, who have free reign to chunk away the rest of Liquid safely. From there, it's all downhill for the former LCS champions as EG make the dream work and eviscerate the remaining members of TL. Danny finds the easy triple kill and Ignar decides he wants to have some fun as well, baiting Jensen into the Nexus turrets with Zonias, then yeeting him into the fountain with a headbutt heard around the world for the ace. What's funny about this is the special property of the Fountain Laser that denies the ability to revive with something like a Guardian Angel or persist through death with something like a Trindomir Ultimate. If the laser kills you, you can't get back up. Jensen dying to the pure damage of the Fountain, his Guardian Angel couldn't proc, and EG didn't have to wait for him to respawn and kill him again before they could end. And so with that kill, EG marched down mid to end an absolute scorcher of a game that left every fan on the edge of their seats. The cherry on top? Well, let's just send it over to Ignar, who some say is still dancing on his enemy's graves to this day. I'm Captain Flowers, and that does it here for today's episode of the Outplay by Play. Be sure to head on down to the comments. Let me know what you thought of this classic NA Fiesta, and which plays and which games you want me to break down next time. Until then, you can follow at LOL Esports on Twitter to stay on top of all the news, all the biggest games, and all the sauciest banter in the world of League of Legends Esports. Until then, we'll see you next time.